Welcome to Epic Math Battles of History! Binomial versus Geometric! Begin! Okay, I'm, I'm really, really sorry for that one. I just, I have issues, you know, can't resist. Can't resist a joke like that, a cultural reference. What am I supposed to do with myself? All right, so what we're talking about is binomial versus geometric distributions. So it's important that we talk about binomials first, even though you've done a little bit of work on that from page 349 to 351. So let's quickly recap binomial distributions. So the key idea behind a binomial distribution is that it has three critical characteristics. You have a fixed number of trials. We have clearly defined success or failure, so either two options, success or failure. And we have a constant P, which is the probability of success. Let's take a look at an example that meets those three criteria. Let's see, open up a new page. All right. So let's say you're taking a multiple choice test. And let's say there are 25 questions. And let's say there are four correct an or four answers in each question. Now, you haven't studied for this test because, I don't know, you're playing World of Warcraft all weekend. You want to know what is the probability that you get that you pass the test by guessing. So what is the probability of passing by guessing? Well, this is binomial. And we can talk about how to calculate this probability later. That'll be the next video. But right now, all we need to know is this is binomial. So this is the type of distribution. And then the parameters are n is 25, because there are 25 questions. And what would the probability of success be? Pause your video, unpause it, 0.25, because that's one out of four probability of getting the right answer. These are called the parameters. All right, not so bad. We're going to come back to this exact question in the next video. The next idea is a geometric distribution. Okay, so the geometric distribution is really, really similar to a binomial distribution. So the first two are very similar because we have a fixed probability of success, that's P, and the success or failure, um, those are two options. So there might be, like in the multiple choice uh, example, there might be a lot of different answers, but there's one probability of success and there's one failure. The failure is getting a different answer than the right answer. The key difference here, and it's important to understand the differences so that you can group these together appropriately and not over-apply one or the other, is that in a geometric distribution, we keep trying over and over and over and over again until we get a success. Until we find that first success, and then we record the amount of trials it takes to get the correct solution. Now let's say we're buying lottery tickets. And your friend wants to know how long before you win. 
So on average, it's asking how long is it going to take before you win? So you get that first success. And let's say you need to guess three numbers that are 0 through 9. So you need to guess all of those correctly. Well, based on probability rules, the probability of guessing all three correct would be P is, well, guessing each number correctly is 1 out of 10. 1 out of 10, 1 out of 10, 1 out of 10. So that's a total probability of 1,000. And what type of distribution is? Well, we want to, we're going to stop when we get our first win. So, sorry, this would be 1 over 1,000. Make that correction. Since we're going to keep buying lottery tickets until we win, which is a bad idea, by the way, that's not smart, that makes this geometric. So whenever you are creating or talking about a distribution, what you need to say is the name and then the parameters. So for binomials, the parameters are n and p, the number of trials and the probability of success. For geometrics, the parameter is just p because n changes. Hopefully this video was helpful in understanding the differences between binomial and geometric distributions. The formative is essentially going to be identifying binomial distributions and then calculating the mean and standard deviation, which will be the next video.